as as we said, this is going to be a test of memory because it was it was a while ago now. But it was a it was a very significant season for Cheltenham Town, um, trying to get promoted to the conference for four or five years, and finishing second, 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 third. Some of you were involved in that, um, and then finally got over the line in ninety six, ninety seven. So we're going to have a little chat, hopefully, about that season and building up to that big game at Burton on the last day of the season, which you you were all involved in. So the first thing that springs to mind for me. Um, and I think you were all involved in it, was the friendly against Southampton uh, pre-season as part of the Krista Warren deal. Um, they all turned up, Matt Letitia, uh, Graham Souness brought a strong team. What, what was that one like to play in, uh, in a friendly? Because that, that got a decent crowd, didn't it? Who, who wants to go first on that one? Whoever can remember it, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't remember it at all, to be fair. It was just one of those sort of turn up to and I think at the time as well I wasn't really that involved I think I was on the transfer list at the time so um, just coming back from injury from this previous season and uh, don't really much remember much about it I can't even remember I started but um, yeah I just remember us all having a chat in the dressing room thinking that they'd send the reserves or the under 21s you know or something like that and you know we were watching the coach pull up and out steps Besant, you know, Letizia. <laughs> and, we, and we're thinking, we're in for a game here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> I just remember all the lads talking about that in the dressing room before the game. You know, and how much of a, you know, a squad they'd got for us to play against sort of thing, you know. Yeah. And Letizia was probably the biggest of all their big names. And do you, do you, as, as midfielders, three of you midfielders, do you remember, you know, thinking how good he was? Was he as good as you expected? Was he, did he live up yeah, to the just, expectation? Well, was, from the edge, right. I just remember not getting near him, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, couldn't get close to him. You know, just like all good players, he was one and two touch. Couldn't really, you know, get near to him to make a challenge at all. He just moved the ball on quick like they all did. You know what I mean? It was just like that. Yeah. But Archie, was, what were you going to say? Was he, he, if I can remember, I thought he was bigger than he was on TV. And I thought he was very quick, generally. Yeah. So you had the impression when he was a footballer that like he was a bit, yeah, a bit slow, yeah, a bit bothered at times, but on the ball. But I've got to say, playing against him, he was very quick, mm. very, very. That's my early impression of the game, really. Um, yeah, like I said, a long time ago, and um, but yeah, that, that's one that stood out for me. Just how big, big he was as a as a guy, and how he um, was very quick, just on you know with his feet, very quick with the ball, but also his pace. It's always slow. Um, yeah. Like I said, apart from that, I can't really remember the game that well, really. And Mark We've Bellingham all scored it uh... somewhere. <laughs> you are? We've all buried it deep in our in our <laughs> brains. Don't want to remember that one, I don't think. What was the result? Well, uh, 3-1. 3-1, yeah. 3-1. Yeah. 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 3-1 probably felt like yeah. thirty three one. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> I actually I actually felt that I mean, did we play Stoke as well that pre season? And we, I actually, we, I actually yeah. I actually thought that the Southampton game was a little bit easier to play than the Stoke game because if you remember as a midfield player, Makari used to just launch into the corners and all we were doing was just chasing midfield players up and down the park all day. Um, so, so playing against Southampton where they actually kept the ball in front of you and played it around was a little bit easier, to be honest. <laughs> Physically, it was a little bit easier. I thought, anyway. I don't know what the lads thought. I, I think the end of the season... Um... Martin, as you said, you, you're on the transfer list um, and, and, and Cheno, you scored against Sittingbourne on the opening day and Martin, you came off the bench and scored in that one despite being on the transfer list. It wasn't long before you got taken off the transfer list. So what, what do you remember? That must have been a bit of a strange time for you because you had two good years at the club. Did you think you were really on your way out at one point? Um, yeah, pretty much. I, I, I do recall um, Chris coming in um, sort of being out of favour the year before but I also had a, a shot at my collarbone in three places, so it was uh, sort of out for quite a quite significant amount of time the season before. I was glad to be playing again, to be fair. Um, Jason had done really well the year before with Jimmy Smith. We brought in, I think it was Bell Bellamy, Bell um, up front. Bellingham, yeah. Mark Bellingham. Bellingham. <laughs> um, and and in, and in all fairness, yeah, I didn't I didn't feel as though I was fitting into uh, Chris's plans. Um, but, you know, it's a great bunch of lads, really. So if you get an opportunity, you play and you, you try your best. I love the game. So um, I was just doing, doing what I could do to uh, 
either move on to a, a sort of nicer club or a bigger club or, um, you know, literally do my bit for the boys. So, um, as, you, as you say, things changed. I, I can't remember how long Chris was there, but uh, I think I was still pretty much leaving up until the point that he went, really. Yeah. And do, do you remember there being a bit of pressure... Um, at the start of that season, because Rushton had gone up the previous year. They, they're obviously the big spenders. They'd gone up. Did you feel like that was your year to do it, 96, 97? Because Gloucester City was strong, but Rushton were the, were the big boys, really. They, they'd gone up to the conference. Did you, did you feel like real pressure that you needed to get promoted that season? Not too sure whether it was the pressure we felt, but we did all think in that season it was probably our time. You know what I mean, after, like I say, the season before with Rushton going, um, there were still some strong sides in the in the league, but I think we all felt at the start of that season that we had a pretty good chance. To be fair, with with the squad we had assembled, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, oh, yeah. I mean, I just. I, I mean, as regards pressure, I don't know. I mean, when you when you come in for pre-season training, you don't really think about what's going to happen at the end of the season, do you? You kind of take yeah. session by session and um, match by you know game by game, but. Um, I don't know, I suppose as it progressed, then you start to think, well, could we actually do it? You know what I mean? And we had, we had, the, we had the lads there capable of doing it, definitely. You know, every, everybody on here and everybody that was involved in the squad um, were definitely good enough to get promoted. No, no, no problem there. Archie, you'd been involved in the team. You signed just before um, relegation. It was too late to, to keep the club up, but you'd been there through uh, Lindsay finishing second to Dover. Farnborough, Hensford, and then Chris Robertson coming in and just missing out again. So, did you think it was about time you, you got, got to the conference where, where everyone wanted to be? Not really. I was quite happy. <laughs> no, honestly, not, not really. Uh, I was enjoying the football. It was yeah. nice to be in a league where you're winning games of football. Whether you come first, second, or third, I was just enjoying it. And um, I think we had a conversation before where, obviously, with Chris coming in and putting some really good players himself then when Cox took over it just seemed to pick even more mm. um, I just like I said before I think Steve got the I don't think the best of it but I think at the time it was the right time for Steve right time for the football club at the time to move on but like I said you know, go back to Lynn's days go back to Chris's days they brought some really good players in and that helped obviously Steve brought a few more in along the way in whatever you want to call it in there. but no I, I wasn't really I, you know, I wasn't really worried about going up and going down I was just enjoying my football like we said before it was a good bunch of lads. Um, we enjoyed the journeys going up and down the, up and down the motorways. Uh, there was always a good group, um, different cars, that sort of thing. But no, we just enjoyed it. So whether we went up or not, the next thing would have been enjoyable as well. So that was how I seen it. We got promoted, great, let's go again. Mm. Yeah. You know, I've seen it. No, it wasn't about me going down and wanting to get promoted. I've just enjoyed my football. You know, so um, I think prior to that, you know, coming back from Australia and even like the time in Bristol Rovers as a young kid in the reserves, um, I, didn't, I didn't really enjoy that much in Bristol Rovers because it was very, um, very different football. So when you're, when you're in a group of players and a good team, winning games of football week in, week out, I wasn't really bothered where we got. Not really, we just went up and we got on with it. Yeah. We, we, um, we'll, we'll chat a bit about the promotion challenge in a minute, but we, you had a very good FA Cup run that season and um, had to go through right from the first qualifying round, beat Gosport, Salisbury, um, Weymouth and that set up a game against Martin against your old club and, and Cheno you played for Bath as well didn't you so Bath yeah, City came, uh, yeah both of you joined from Bath in the mm. fourth qualifier um, nil nil draw at their place where I think you, you played quite well and probably a bit unlucky not to win it and then you're one nil down in the 90th minute at home I don't know if you remember how clearly you remember that Martin but you, you got the all important equaliser to take it to extra time before it all kicked off <laughs> yeah, um, I was, yeah, I had a little funny memory when you phoned me um, a couple of days days ago. Really, I do I do remember the game quite well. Um, uh, my, my my memory of it though was not scoring the goal. It was more of a case of Grantley Dix, who was an old sort of friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he he just took me straight out, um, and as he was walking by, he stamped on my head as well. So. Um, <laughs> It, that was about five minutes before we scored. So, yeah, the, the, the actual game did turn on its head sort of the last five minutes. I think Jason got the winner in the end. I'm not 100% sure. But, um, no, it was, it was a good game, um, competitive. 
and it's, it's, it's always nice to go back and play against uh, your old lads, like, you know, your friends. But, uh, no, it, you know, it, it's one of those things. I don't remember the goal, but I do remember a part of the game, which uh, brings a smile <laughs> to my face. Grant hasn't changed at all. Chenna, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your memories of that one? Cause you, like Martin, or even a little bit more recent, you joined from Bath. So what was that like um, playing against them for, with such a, a, big, a big tie against Peterborough at stake with the replay? Uh, well, in all fairness, so I can't really remember too much of that one, but um, it would have been a case I would have only come in the sort of season before, wouldn't I? So yeah. it would have probably been playing against all the lads that were there when I when I left. Um, and I'd imagine I'd have probably had a target on me back to start with. <laughs> I mean, especially, <laughs> like I say, with, with Dick, because in all fairness, when I was at Bath, we got on as teammates, but never really seen eye to eye, to be fair. Um, so I think I want to play a little bit too much for him. Just want to kick everyone or something into the channel, do you know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, it, I'd imagine it would have been a bit of a, a competitive one and one I would have wanted to, to come out with the, with the win, obviously, um, being an old club. But uh, yeah, I'd imagine there was a, a few feisty challenges going in throughout the game. But as for remembering too much about the certain duels and battles in who I was up against her in all fairness I can't remember too much about it Archie you got your 50th goal for the club during that extra time period um, but I think from, from what I remember when Martin equalised I think Bath in extra time they they, they, they really did wilt and um, Jason got one Jimmy Smith lobbed one in and you, you got one as well and it was you know it was amazing how the game changed and that just needed that one breakthrough yeah. and, and Bath's head went down yeah. Been the ex-Bath City manager. I think they ever, um, they ever thanked me for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so even though I had a, we had some good times over there, I think when we had the bad times, you always chat that one in. I think the Bath City supporters. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, um, again, yeah, I can, yeah, I vaguely remember the game. But yeah, I think it's one of the games where, I think, like I said, we were on the way out, and before you know it, the three-one up, and it was game over. Um, but again, same thing. We were, I think, we were. Uh, we're trying to play football in those days, I think, like Chen was saying, we're trying to play a bit of football. Um, who was in charge of Bath at the time? Who was managing then? Maybe Ricketts? Ricketts? Well, well it, it, yeah, it would have been Ricketts, I because it was Ricketts when I left. Um, yeah, I think it was Ricketts. Was that was, yeah, that but I can't remember bit. whether they changed over whilst I was at Cheltenham, because it wasn't too long that, I think, who was it came in after? Um, was it Steve Millard? Can't remember. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Ricketts for that one, I think. Yeah, yeah. It probably was, yeah. Yeah, not much football there, then. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why I left. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you but go. in those days, you know, Cheltenham, it was a good achievement to get to the first round. You know, these days, Cheltenham start in the first round, but in those days, it was a battle to get there. So to go to Peterborough away, um, does that one does that one stand out in the memory a little bit going to London Road and they were struggling a bit in what is now League One under Barry Fry but yeah. to go there and get a nil nil um, yeah. was, was a decent it, it, result. It was a bit for me because I had a friend playing for Peterborough at the time, Martin O'Connor. Um, oh yeah, him. So yeah. he uh, and he missed a penalty if you remember. So <laughs> yeah. I very often reminded him of that even <laughs> recently. So, you know, um, it, they had a penalty at their ground and I think he missed it. Um, and I've reminded him of the facts ever since. Um, but yeah, I rem- I, and also it, it brought back memories when I played there for Wrexham against Peterborough. You know, so I've been to the ground a few times, um, to be honest. But um, I just remember it being uh, sort of, I think we stayed overnight, didn't we, before the game. Um, and I remember Bocca, I was rooming with Bocca, and he just, he just snored all night. <laughs> go for it. I couldn't get any sleep. <laughs> But um, but uh, the actual game, I just remember it being, um, you know, like I don't, I don't, I don't remember Peterborough, Peterborough being any better than anybody else who played that season. To be honest with you, it was just a, it felt like a normal non-league game, you know. Um, nothing. I was really... more impressed with Barry Fry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because he was the hub of the club, wasn't he? And it was yeah. all about him. And it was, yeah. yeah, it was good. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I mean, in the, in the uh, I remember in the return leg at our ground, he uh, he came in, didn't he? 
Yeah. And you know they're beatles. He, he's it's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's a good character at the time. And I remember when I think they scored the second or third goal late on, he was just up and down the um, chat line. But yeah, just a genuinely nice guy, I think. Yeah. 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 Nice fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Pop, as you mentioned, pop, Darren, um, as you mentioned, Martin O'Connor missed the penalty. And I think Jamie Victory was very close to winning it for Cheltenham towards yeah. the end with the header. I wanted to ask you about Jamie because he, he was one of the good signings you met. Chris Robinson made some very good signings. Bocker, um, you brought yeah. Cheno in, brought, brought yourself yeah. in, but he brought Jamie in and you went through the leagues with Cheltenham um, yeah. right the way up to League One. Did you, did, you, did you all think as soon as this lad came in from Bournemouth, you know, young lad, did you, did you see something? Did yeah. you think he was going to be you know, a special player at the time? Yeah, absolutely. You could tell he was, he was a, good, a good player. I mean, I played left back when I was at Wrexham and that, but um, you, know, you could tell he was absolutely quality. Um, you know, he was really, really good on the ball. Like to get forward as well. Like joined, joined in, started the player. Yeah, he was just an all round good player. Really good. He never said an, he never said anything though. I don't no. think I heard him speak. <laughs> no, he didn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> just let the football do the talking. Yeah, uh, no, he, he was quality. Yeah, he was quality. Yeah, yeah. Good left. I think in those days there weren't really all right. Channel had these lefty as well. There weren't really. I think we seem to have many lefties, have we? Yeah, exactly. I tell, I tell you what, though, um, Archie, in all fairness, if it wasn't for injuries, I, I, I don't think he would have signed him because Steve Benton was, I thought, just as good as Benno. Yeah. Benno, he just struggled with injuries, you know what I mean? But yeah. he was up in yeah. the 90s. So Benno, I've never, Benno, never ever I, seen him get beat by, by, by a winger. I live at the road from Benno. And, Did you not? Uh, yeah, I still live quite close to him now. And... Uh, and it was all right, just like when you get in the car with him and Jonah, we had to like make sure that he had all his spivs gone. You <laughs> 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 get the train, Christ almighty. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Steve was different already. Steve was more for me, more of a defender going forward. Yeah, more of a defender than. Um... Yeah, he'd never get beat. Yeah, but with Jamie, it was different. Jamie was a good defender, but I think Jamie never. On a bit more as football developed a little bit more, Jamie would also get a bit forward, wouldn't he? As well, yeah, he'd give you a little bit more. And, and he scored the odd goal as well, wouldn't he? You know I mean? yeah, they, yeah, well, I think Stephen was more. I mean, they were both very similar guys, weren't they? Very similar, yeah. Very yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny the way Stephen, you know, um, Stephen would say good to Goose, and I think Jamie was very quiet. Um, didn't really say great deal, but like I said, he'd get the odd goal, and I think he, um, yeah, I think his forward play was probably. A bit better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you look that way, but didn't, yeah. And, yeah, and he did it. develop as he went on through the leagues, didn't he? I mean, he did get better and yeah. better, didn't he? Didn't better have a bad knee? Was it a knee problem he had? Yeah. And he never really yeah. got over it, he? Never really got over it, did he? No, he didn't, no. I, I don't think he even played much more after leaving Cheltenham, did he? No, I didn't think so, no, no. No. He had a little spell at Newport, um, but yeah, he didn't, he didn't ever fully recover from that. Um, mm. Yeah. And another player I wanted to ask you all about is obviously Michael Duff was, was introduced to the team that season as well. Uh, Who's Michael that? Rubbish. Who's Rubbish. That? Rubbish. Who's rubbish, he was. <laughs> rubbish. Is, he, is he something to do with the club now? I, I don't know. I've heard something about that. <laughs> was it? What are you, a right winger? <laughs> <laughs> is he that short, short, fat bloke in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> or a grey hair? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was a skinny, lanky, you know, didn't look like a footballer really when he first came in, did he? What, what were your early memories of him coming in at right back? And I think one game he came on and got taken off again, didn't he? But he did start yeah. to show some yeah. promise pretty quickly. He just athletic, wasn't he? You know, you could tell that he got that ability to get up and down the park. You know, as a, the way the modern game is now with fullbacks attacking the way they do. Um, you could tell he got that kind of thing about him, you know, but... Um, but he yeah, he never, all the attributes to be a good defender, hadn't he? You know. He, did he, did he never really played it right back in the beginning, did he, really? I can't remember that. I, I, can, I can remember him sort of playing right back. Yeah. He, he started off at right back, then when, when Cheltenham got into the league, he played right wing a lot uh, yeah. with Neil Howarth at right back. But he did, I think he did start off there. But it was, um, I think Chris liked to back three, didn't he, with wing backs? Yeah. So mm. Jamie probably, Jamie and Duff were probably the wing backs. And then wing backs. Gar mm. Gary Wooten... Uh, Bocker and Banksy at the back, I think. Gary Wooten, that's a blast on the Wooten, yeah. It is, yeah. He was decent. Mate. What, a, what a ping he had on him, mate. What a strike. Yeah. 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 He could ping a diagonal that boy, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Got injured a lot, though, didn't he? We had injuries coming out of our ears all yeah. season. Love, love the sunbed. 
<laughs> he loved a sunbed. <laughs> he was with Jason. Jason he he was. <laughs> Season tickets. They had on, they had season tickets at Brain Bombs, I reckon. But if somebody had told you then, you know, Michael Duff would go on to play in the Premier League, um, what would you have believed him when he first came in? Did you see that in him or did you did that surprise you that he went as far as he did? Well, yeah. I sent her back. <laughs> <laughs> We were just we were just happy playing summer league football. Yeah, exactly. He, he, he was he, he was an apprentice, wasn't he? When he when we were there, he was an apprentice, yeah. wasn't he, to start with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, And he was just like one of the lads, one of the apprentices, and he was a good lad, like all the rest. Do you know what I mean? Lad, yeah. And he just broke in, and he just just did all right. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Who Football, foot, football's a funny old game, though, isn't it? It's sort of I wouldn't say face fits, but if you if you get a little chance, a little opportunity, and you grab it. Yeah. You know, the world's your oyster, really. I mean, he had natural talent, but, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Zoom meeting here with guys that equally had the same amount of talent, um, two of which obviously went on and played at a higher standard and stuff. But uh, it, it, it's one of those things. Um, there are a lot of players that you think, well, they're all right, and then they, they sort of make the heights, and there's a lot of players you think are fantastic, and they just don't get anywhere. A um, little bit of luck, a little bit of attitude. Um, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, you know. We had a great attitude towards the game, didn't he? he had Steve Cottrell take him to Burnley, so you know that's the way football is. Um, mm. that people, you surround, you know, managers surround themselves with people that they trust, don't they? And yeah. you know, obviously, yeah. Duffo fell into that category. Um, and good, you know, fair play to him. And he, he, he was steady, wasn't he? He was steady, but I didn't think yeah. he set the world alight. He was just no, solid. No. Yeah. yeah. I think his brother, I think his brother was a better defender. Oh, who's his brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shane. Yeah, Shane, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, when you look back, his brother was, I think, the best defender. Again, like Jamie and Steve Benson, I think Michael gave a little bit more going other ways. Yeah. Where Shane, his brother, was more edit, kick it, and that was basically, yeah. So it's a, it a funny one, I, you know, like I said, right place, right time, good yeah. opportunity. As you take it, sometimes you don't, you know. And yeah, yeah. So we, we we spoke about the Peterborough away game getting a nil nil. You brought them back to Wadden Road, packed grounds. Uh, I think it was highlights on BBC, freezing night, and you got you took them to extra time again. Um, really good effort, and then obviously they they pulled away an extra time. But did that, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to remember, but did that performance sort of make you think you could go on and kick on and and get and challenge for promotion that season? No. I think happy to get the replay. It was about the money. You know, they got good money that night. Uh, would have helped pay the wages. And I think that's you know, if you look at look at football now, um, FA Cup, whether you're in the first round qualifying or the first round proper, that's it's all about the money. Mm. You know, and you look at football now. You look at the way things have gone on with the you know the you know with the Premiership now and. Again, it's it, they're minimised minimised apart from each other again with the money. It comes to money again, and you've got a few little clubs at the moment who are struggling to survive because obviously with what's going on. And um, yeah, I think Chatham in those days have a lot of to get to first round, you know, first round proper, and it's it's a payday again. So yeah. for the football clubs, they're more interested in getting the payday than basically where they're going. You know, and you know, first round in those days was massive. First yeah. football, I think we're quite happy to go into the first round and see who we get. And go from there, but I think as a football club, it's more about the money, and, it's, mm-hmm. and it still hasn't changed now. When I mean, you look at it, tell me different. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think you're wrong. Going, it? Yeah, I don't think you're wrong factually, Lee, about the money. But I must admit, I enjoy playing at the the, the higher ranks. Always try yeah, to get through. Yeah, you know, just enjoy well, playing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all enjoy playing. That's why. Yeah. That's why. Bordeaux, we played for, for basically. It was that piece of money we looked at, but like the best money around. But like I said before, we it was a good, it was a good club at the time. It was some good players there. The money was okay for what it was. They were happy doing what they were doing. Mm. You know, as a football club, to get the first round those days, it was a big payday for them, like it is now, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Dean Clark. Nice to see you, Dean. Hello. How you doing? Hey, boys. How you doing, boys? <laughs> 
It seems he's got any air. He didn't have any when he was younger. No. <laughs> Where is he? I can't see him. <laughs> what? You on the you on the waltzers or something? What? <laughs> You're on the waltzers or something. You keep spinning some around. Of us got, some of us got to work for a living, boys. We haven't got your lifestyles. Nice one. Better late than never. You know, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for joining us. You've still got more hair now. Wow. <laughs> Where's your I've got one of your tackles currently. Oh, I know, mate. I know. Yeah. I don't know why I joined that. I didn't even play today in any case, did I? <laughs> I don't know. Played a lot that season. <laughs> no. Come on. You were the better characters, though, weren't you? Okay. <laughs> or just a punch bag, right? No. Come on. Look at the signs at Murphy. Come on. How is Murphy anyway? <laughs> eh? How is Murphy tip though? They okay? Struggling on, mate, innit? Struggling on. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like all clubs now, isn't it? Like, you know what? It's just fucking... It is hard, mate. It is hard. Very hard, yeah. Yeah, mm. very hard. And, um, you know, but that's, 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 that's football. Some mm. people... I still talk a lot of people about football and still people still love the... Uh, the non-league football. They still love it. Mm. Like, I remember the time when we did get promoted to Football League, a lot of supporters at Chelsea didn't enjoy it because yeah. they couldn't spend half time and talk to other fans. It was all came mm. in. Yeah. They lost their, they, I think a lot of people lost their um, identity when it went to four time football. So, you know, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, cha- it's changed mine. It's changed massively in non league. And yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's changed for the better, really. Yeah. Like you said, it's, um, you don't get as much camaraderie and everything now. It's all like people, these youngsters, they want to do their own thing. So um, it's tough, mate. It's tough getting the balance. Yep. I was just thinking my son plays for Alzo in town and when I've, I've been to watch him play, they try yeah. to make it to, they try to be like a pro club and they, yeah. have, they haven't got the resources to do that. So no, it that's don't right. work, it don't work mm-hmm. really, you know? Yeah. Everything's geared up to kind of be like pros and, you know, even, I mean, some of the non-league players have got agents and that, you know. I, I, know. Never, had, we, I never had an agent all the time I played in the game. Yeah, that's Maybe. what we have to deal with now. Every every player you try and get even being released now you've got to go to their agents and they're expecting this they're expecting that it's, it's crazy mate it's not a different world I'm the third wife and one was Steve Potter yeah take it or leave it that was done yeah, 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 that, yeah. 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 Dean, we're just talking about the Peterborough games um, in the FA Cup uh, what were your memories of that Came in in the summer, didn't you? Um, from Hereford, yeah, big signing in the summer, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that through, through Chris Price? Was it, yeah, no one else wanted me, so I got lumbered there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, what are your, your early memories then of that, of that season? Um, just enjoyment, I think, overall, but um, obviously, I came in from Hereford, young lad, I think I was still only 17, 18, so. I didn't have a clue what non-league was all about then, really. And um, to be fair, we had a good group, and they they helped me in massively, like because it, it was a it was a culture shock, really. But um, enjoyed it, yeah. And like I think I expect the boys have said already, but the quality in that squad was um, well as they, as they went on to prove in the next few years, it was it was what more than what they were they were playing. Yeah. So. One of the big, you know, the big event of the season really was the change of manager in January, which, you know, you might have a strong opinion on, but because Chris Robinson certainly hadn't done a terrible job, but the board yeah. obviously thought it was time for a change in January. And did, did as players, did you sense that coming? Because Steve Steve Cotter had come in and helped out a bit, played a bit. Did you did yeah. you feel like Chris was coming to the end, or was it a major shock when he when he got replaced? Um, again, being young and naive, <laughs> I I didn't really see the ins and outs of it, but. When you look back, the last few results we had, and I think we lost in, was it the trophy or the something that that was at his last game or something, if I remember rightly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dulwich in the trophy, yeah. Yeah, and looking back, really, we shouldn't have lost it. So, yeah, he was under pressure, obviously. And then um, Steve, with his character and his his presence, was, was a threat to that, I suppose. 
Martin, was that good news for you at the time? Because you, like you said, you felt like you may be on the way out of the club, but you then you did start playing regularly and scoring again, didn't you, after Steve took over? Well, I actually think, in, if my memory serves me right, I was on my way to Newport. <laughs> so, um, oh, literally... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think Pricey had gone earlier, hadn't he? So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was one of those. I, I, I literally think about that day or that evening. I was supposed to go and see um, Newport and sign for them, but um, yeah, no, it, it changed overnight. Obviously, uh, went on. It was a very successful season, uh, and it worked right for me. So uh, yeah, no. I, Chris leaving helped me stay at the club. Really, um, I don't think he. It particularly dented um, our chances either. Um, I, I think we were just a bit disjointed under Chris, to be fair. Yeah, Darren, um, you'd yeah. worked with Chris at Atherston and he, you know, he wanted to bring you to Cheltenham and he'd, he'd settled in and he'd had, you know, he'd had a year and a half probably at the club. And then, he, you know, what was it like for you? Probably knew Chris better than any of the other lads here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, like I said before, you know, managers kind of trust people that they've had other clubs, don't they? And they bring you in and, um, when Steve came in as manager, I mean, straight away, I thought that, well, that was the end of my time there, to be honest with you, because it's, that's just the nature of football. You know, managers like some players, don't like other players. But to be fair to Steve, he kind of, um, he sort of left me out for a few games when he first came in, I think. And then um, I sort of, I must have just won him over because um, it changed his opinion. I, I got a new contract with him and everything. You know, so, yeah. you know, but again, it's just about, even if it weren't Steve, anybody else who would have come in, you've got, to improve, you've got to show that you want to stay at the club and you prove that you want to be there. So that's yeah. all about performances and attitude in training. You know what I mean? So for me, it was do a, do a knuckle down, get me, you know, get me head, head around it and try and do as well as I can and try and get back in favour or do I just leave? And I, I love the club and I love the lads that were there. Um, and I just felt that, you know, I wanted to do that. And, you know, it worked. So Yeah. I think you Archie were, did. I was just going to say, Darren, you worked exceptionally hard, mate, in training. Thank you. And we, and we had a lot of injuries. <laughs> 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 well, exactly. So I took my opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah Steve. I mean, yeah, I mean, we had fantastic players at the club, didn't we? So... You know, it was a privilege to play for him, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it's... Um, Some, it, sometimes you are in teams, you are in sides, and you think, all right, the manager puts the team out on the pitch and he maybe sets a bit of a, 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 a way you play, a style. But players win your games, really. And when you've got a, the, the better squad in the league, you're going to win most games in the league. You know what I mean? So we had a, we had a good squad of players. Whether I think Chris would have carried on that season, Steve took over... We would have still been there or thereabouts, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I say, looking back, probably Chris will, will make a different ch a choice of bringing Steve in for a couple of games to play because that sort of signed his own will, really. You know what I mean? When you bring <laughs> yeah, somebody yeah, who's a, an ex-player at a club, yeah. um, who a lot of people had a lot of uh, 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 um, high ideals or um, opinions about, you yeah. know, and he's at that age where he's finishing off his playing career. Um, there was only one thing going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sooner <laughs> yeah. down the line, it is. Yeah. Uh, He's going to step on Chris's toes, or something's going to happen, and he's just there, ready made just to take over the reins. And that's what happened. It was always going to happen. We, we knew that as players in the in the changing room, it was always going to happen at that time. I Alan say, might have played a few more personally games. For me, I mean, Chris, <laughs> you say, what you say, Dean? I might have played a few more games. <laughs> what if he stayed? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, if Chris has stayed, yeah. Yeah, no, and in all fairness, personally, for me, it, I would prefer Chris to stay because I say for what Steve done for the club afterwards, you can't complain. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he yeah. came in had his own ideas, different ideas. I didn't play as much under Steve as I did for Chris because obviously he brought me in and had a, a role for me. Um, and yeah, I stayed to the end of the season and still done well like everyone else. You know what I mean? Um, and played a big part in everything at the end of the season. But you just know at that time. Do I stay and give it another go, or no? I don't want to be a bit poor player. I'll just move on again. You know what I mean? So, like I say, where, whereas Daz decided to stay, give it a go, and, and, and prove, um, I could have done that, but I had a, a good offer back at Bath City. I'm thinking, 
uh, I'd sooner play week in, week out than maybe mm. be more of a bench player that season. That's, and that's what I saw coming. So, yeah. so that's why yeah. I left. But fair play, Steve went on, done everything he had to for the club. And I mean, everyone who played under him uh, says, says in a high, I've got high opinions of him. Um, I just thought he was a little bit self centered when he came in. <laughs> and it was all about him, to be fair. Do you remember his first session? No. What you said you were there, Art, were you? You what? didn't train much, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you had another night off that night. Do you remember his first session? No. What did he say, Arch? He basically told everyone that he was going to go all the way. And basically, if you want part of it, jump on his back. If you didn't, basically, do one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that just highlights what I just said. It was all about him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. what he wanted. And fair play, if you want to get on board and do it. And we all did the rest of that season, you know what I mean? But then I suppose when that season comes, it was mid-season, we were challenging, everyone's going to stay there. And then when the season comes, in the end of it, Sarah, you then got to make your own decision on, am I going to feature now? Is he going to, who's he going to bring in? You know what I mean? Well, and what's best back, for you? When yeah. you look back, one day this guy turned up and I thought, who's this guy then? I didn't know <laughs> it, but looking back, you know obviously what happened, you know. Connor Farmer knew him really well. He was obviously Tottenham born and um, he was at Sligo. Was he, was he at Sligo managing there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think what's happened is, it's like, you know, whether it's fair or unfair, you know, as a manager, um, they brought him in. They told the team to have a look around, see what he thought. And, um, yeah, they think if you want the job, it's yours. And I think that's what happened, you know. Because he was just a player, wasn't he? Just a guy who came in and played. Yeah. yeah. He didn't play much, did he? he Martin, I think you played up front with him. Um, I don't know if you remember Boxing Day, Gloucester City away. I think you played up front with Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. Someone told me he was a runner, but he didn't do any of mine. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you remember much about that Boxing Day game? Um, because obviously you, Gloucester were, were one of the main rivals for promotion, obviously local rivals. And that was uh, Dale Watkins scored from long range right at the end, didn't he? Lobbed one over Ganaway. Can't remember it. Uh, no. I've, 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 it's one of those local derbies, isn't it? It... it Gloucester was always a hard game. Worcester was a hard game. Um, yeah. They're just hard physical games. And, you, and you're either up for it and, and you have the rub of the green or you don't. Um, I don't really remember the game, so you fairly remember playing with Steve other than... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In all of it's running, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Ex-Wimbledon player, wasn't he, I think? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Knee, knee injury or something? Yeah. yeah. No. I, I, he had I a pebble really in his shoe, from... didn't he? When he ran, he had a pebble. <laughs> pebble in his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> when he... <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it, it, it was one of those. It, it, if Gloucester beat us that day, it was because they probably kicked the living daylights out of us. Um, and, and we didn't have the rub of the green. We were always a stronger squad. Um, I, I felt they had a good crack in the changing room, uh, but I always felt we had equally as good a crack, but a um, bit more quality. But we probably got kicked off the park, if it, if it, to be fair. <laughs> I think that was the difference between the sides, wasn't it? You know what I mean? I think we had a little bit more quality in our changing room. We also did have players who could mix it, you know what I mean? But I think they were just mm. fight, 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 wasn't it? You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Go, back, go back and look at the pitches in those days. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. They had a couple who could play. Webby could play in the midfield, couldn't they? Yeah, you could play, but you know, you can only do so much on the pitch. You've got to play on. You know? I, mean, I can remember yeah. going to the bridge, and I think before the game, or they must have trained on the Thursday prior to game on the Saturday, and they probably should train on the pitch, and they kicked it up. We got there, we're like, whoa. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you, you're sort of, you're, yeah. so I think we could, I think as a scrum, though, they do a little bit as well. We could chuck it in channels, and we could kick a little bit as well. Um, so I think that, that was good for us. We could do a bit more sorts, you know, and some teams could only play one way. Mm. I can mm. remember George playing one way and that was it. And I can remember the manager shouting one day, I think, um, let's pass the football. And when the players on, I said, well, hang on a minute, he taught us all this, he didn't just smash it in the channel. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it was really funny. And, and the lad that actually said it was um, Steve Owen. Yeah. ex <laughs> um, player. Yeah. Jesse. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Yeah, good as gold, yeah. So again, I think it, it depends on, yeah, I mean, look at the pitch now, generally to what we play, they're fantastic lot of them, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. Spending yeah. more money on 
played football, but back in some of, some of the games just come off and you know, wear socks we wore, they were black. Yeah. Boot. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so I think that's got a big part of playing it sometimes, you know? Mm. Yeah. The, the, um, the return game against Gloucester was, was Easter Monday, and we'll come on to that in a minute. But just before that, um, we spoke about the Bath comeback. I don't know if you remember the hales Owen game uh, away. Um, one nil down at half time. I think Bocca scored an own goal, yeah. and then you scored five five goals in the yeah, second I half. Know, I think I remember that one. Yeah. Who was the lad in midfield, Darren? Who for Hales Owen? Snapper. What his name is? Nate. Yeah. Yeah. Nate Snapper. Yeah. yeah. He's mm. he's at the club now. He's he's like um, assistant manager. Oh, fair play to him. Yeah. Yeah, John Snake, wasn't it? Yeah. John yeah. John Snake. Yeah. John Snake, <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah, he coaches my book, my lad now. Uh, to be yeah, honest. Oh, fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had yeah, Martin, you back. scored that day as well. Sorry, Darren. Say again. Sorry. Y- you go ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, they had um, as a midfield, they were quite hard working. You know, they um, they close you down quick and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And just try to stop you from playing. And they had they had like Snapper who could who could do that, and then they had the other one who kind of like. Was a bit more flair, you know. And was Mike, that the crisp? Was that crisp? That does. Richard Crisp, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he was steady, wasn't he? Most teams were like that, weren't they? They had somebody who could, you know, I did that for Cheltenham, and Archer was the one who could play. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Jenny had so the I, legs, though. I, I just stopped him, and I just set him up, and you know, booted him, and Archer just put the piss with the ball. <laughs> I just had a conversation with Steve Koch about this, and him, I think it was about me and Chen as well. About he was saying to us about who was in the hole. Yeah, I, mean, I think he said to us once, "There was no such position." <laughs> so, yeah. well, that's where he's been told to play in the hole. He said, "Well, where was that position then?" <laughs> but I think he's been got rid of that one straight away. Yeah, yeah. I was just glad yeah, Jenny done. Jenny done my running for me. He used to always go past. <laughs> always new boy. As soon as it comes up to you, I knew where to go, mate. I like, were going to drop it down into me, flick it on. Oh, don't worry. Intelligent, quick, mate, weren't you, mate? Hey? Quick, weren't you, Jenna? We could run, mate. Well, quick, <laughs> that's, that's what it was. Daz, you, you done the, Daz done the tack in. Archie's done the play. I just ran everywhere. Clarky, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just out of the back, mind. <laughs> Yeah, Dean, you came in as a fullback, but you did. End, I think you ended up playing midfield quite a lot yourself that season, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to work out like I was working trying to like Bob and Daz obviously played in there a lot. I would, I would have thought Arch was just you just had a free roll, didn't you, Arch? You Thank didn't you. have a, it, wasn't yeah. it, mate? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we get just, a ball, we Arch. Just made it look that way, Dean. <laughs> 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 I was just basically like we've got an injury at right back. I played there and got run it. Left wing, I played there. I think that season I played everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. And that's, I mean, no, you, you think about it now, you might want to score 15, 16. Yeah. If yeah. that. So yeah. you have to have flexibility. Bob can play a few positions. Chen can do the same as. Yeah. yeah. I remember when was, what game was it? We went somewhere, I think, in, we chatted about the other day. Uh, we went to Manchester. Came up there in the FA Trophy. And that's better than Chen. see your face now. <laughs> and actually, I've just I've just moved. The uh, missus come back and rustling about a bit downstairs. I couldn't hear well, so I'm moving up in the bedroom, mate. I'm not having that. And Jimmy Smith takes that field. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, you've got to have a little bit of flexibility where you're playing. You know what I mean, it's yeah, all part of it. Yeah, but like I yeah. said earlier, I think as a team we could do a little bit of all sorts, couldn't we? Yeah, we could play our football. We could put off yeah. the you too. And, um, you know, if there was no pit, no grass on the pitch, we, we can handle that as well. So that was, you know, that's the, you know. And if you look at the best players out there now, they do the same, don't they? They all can all run down, yeah. all get a back. Yeah. And uh, the difference is they can all play football. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's when I think even at, even at the moment in non-league, it's all right having good players, but you need effective players. And I just, that's what, that's what wins you leagues, wins you titles, isn't it? Mm. Not just being yeah. good every week or good training. You need to be effective on a football pitch, don't you? Yeah. Well, I think it's easy now, I think, you know, because nowadays there's such a thing as a mobile phone. Yeah. And I think a lot of players do talk to each other. Um, <laughs> I think it's good really to talk and say, come and play for us for 50 quid. I think that goes on quite a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think back in our day, it was very different to move on because there was no agents. Um, um, and there was no communication, really, was there? 
No, no. no. And as you can move on a lot quicker by talking through your mobile phones, like players, you get a manager saying, no, ask him, you know, he wants an extra 20 quid. It happens in Bristol now, you know, you get a lot of players moving around for an extra 20, 30 quid. But like yeah. I think I was, John, years ago, um, a while ago, we had a conversation about this saying, oh, I was more happy to be in a team at Cheltenham, good bunch of lads, money was okay, wasn't, wasn't the best money in the league. But I'd rather be in that situation rather than playing for someone who was two hours up the road for double the money and not being happy. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. like Mark and Boyle were saying earlier, that, that was that what, what it was about, being happy. The money was relevant, really, but happy, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you remember that, that second half against Hales Owen? Because to score five and a half, um, Darren, you scored, Martin, you scored, and it, that, that was probably yeah. one of the halves that sort of went a long way towards getting you over the line really yeah yeah um, well yeah I remember the goal obviously but um, uh, as regards most of the other game yeah I think exactly right it was a game of two halves when it first off was a battle second off they just collapsed um, I don't know if the pressure got to them because I think that were they like third in the league and we were second or the other way around or something like that they, they were up there yeah they were just just uh, yeah. yeah just on the fringes of it and I know it was I mean obviously before the game I remember it, you know Cox was trying to sort of motivate us to, you know, put the emphasis on the fact that we've got to win it um, to have a chance of, of promotion, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I remember their, just at the end of the game, I remember their players just coming over and saying, oh, God, you lot are fantastic. I've never seen it before in non-league football. Players coming up to you and just saying how, how brilliant you were. Like, and I, just, I, I just thought it was weird, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Half the time we didn't, speak, we didn't speak to anybody after the game, especially on the other side. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, they just—I remember loads of them coming up and just saying, "Oh, yeah. oh fantastic! I hope you win the league." And I just thought, "Oh, okay, fair enough." Yeah, and then three thousand turned up for the Gloucester game on Easter Monday, which you know you'd have all played in Gloucester derby games before that, but that because you were both going for promotion and big crowds, pitch was dusty, some great pictures of people flying in around the waist and things like that, and. Do you, do you yeah. remember much about that one, Darren? You scored the, the all important equaliser with a header. Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, typical derby when you know the blood, blood and guts, everybody trying to kick lumps out of each other. Um, no, that was just you, Dad. Well, that was you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it was you know what you as the lads have said before, you knew what you were going to get in a derby game against Gloucester. It was going to be blood and guts, and you know proper passion in the game and if you weren't up for it as Martin said before if you weren't up for it you were going to get turned over um, yes we had better players but um, you know if you weren't up for the actual game um, and I think we started I don't think we started particularly well did we if I remember rightly I think you know they kind of had a lot of the ball and a lot of attacks and we were on the back foot a little bit but I think it turned again didn't it you know so yeah um, but that's Jenny, I, Jenny was probably chirping away in the middle there. I Come think on, I could just remember. Yeah. I, I, I was probably just fighting John all game. <laughs> <laughs> Loved the battle with John all the way. Yeah, yeah. just fighting him all game. I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. chirping chirp, away. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Chirping away, <laughs> winding him up. Forney probably coming through and kicking me a few times, but. Uh, <laughs> Daz, can you sort this one out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then when it all yeah. did kick off, I think I was by the tunnel. I did just stay away from music. <laughs> I think I ran off. <laughs> they they off go, did it? I'll start it off and let you carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, do you remember um, Richard Donwell came in? on? Uh, we mentioned him earlier, missed the penalty against Burn, but he, he played up front with you in that game and, and came in and scored a few uh, on low from Barnet. Do you remember much about him and what he was like as a young lad coming in or not really? No, not really. I, you know, it's, it, when I look back, it's a long time ago now. Um, a lot of football's passed and played with a lot of different players. So, uh, no, I don't, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't recall. Um, he obviously don't, he's obviously a good player, though. I mean, it's, it was one of those. Um, and if you score a few for us, then fair play to it. He's, he's sort of part of the team. But no, I don't, I don't really recall. Yeah. I actually got through quite a lot of strikers that season because Bellingham came in, as you said. John Simmons came in. Do you remember him? He came in just before Chris Robinson left. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, Jason, yourself, um, done well on loan. Um, but you, you've got 14. But Darren, you, you 
you scored a lot of important goals during the running that season. I think you got six goals, including that Gloucester one. Right. Um, yeah. And Ashford away got an equaliser. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember that one. There was that was an interesting trip. Um, that was lucky. But yeah, he was lucky, he was lucky for me to score. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, do, I remember him vaguely, but you know, it's it's just one of them. And it, you, you just get on the ball, you have an opportunity to shoot, and I just used to shoot if I could, and that was it. And sometimes I caught them right, and they went in. Other times I played thirty foot over the bar. You know what I mean? It was just, but it, I mean, you know, it was. We had a, a team of players, didn't we? A squad of players that could, as Archie said before, you know, anybody could, you know, you could play right back. You could go and play left back, centre mid. You know, we had we had the ability in our team to be able to get chances to. You know, we would always create, wouldn't we? As a team, we'd always create chances. So if you're lucky enough to get on the end of it, you know, that's the way it was. But, Did we stay the night now? Again? Did we stay the night? I can't remember. I can't remember. Okay. Well, Did we stay the night and ask for that time? I think we did, and yeah, I recall it somehow. But did didn't I get grief for dodgy sandwiches again, or something like that? Did you ring with someone? <laughs> it was it ninety, huh? It was it ninety? I don't know. Did someone ring with someone. I got some sort of grief. We got on the bus. We got on the bus. <laughs> uh, we were a bit late, and Steve said to someone, "Where's the lad to?" And he was doing his prayers on the map. The hotel room. <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, I remember something vaguely, but who was he? Who was playing then? <laughs> and he was. We were right on the bus, and I can remember clearly now. Someone said, "Where's the lad?" He was a foreign lad. I don't know where he's from. Can't remember now. And someone said, "He's he's praying." <laughs> in, in the hotel. You can't. Now, I cannot remember that honestly. Doctor and said, "Get him to pray on the bus. You got to go." Ah, right. uh, the the. The, yeah, it was either some sort of Polish or something like that, or foreign, just Gauski or something like that. I don't know, but you were. <laughs> oh, I thought he was more Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> Clutching at straws. Can't <laughs> Not a clue what you're on about, Art. <laughs> Not a clue. It's a true story. Honestly, he was he was praying in his room because obviously that's the time of day he had to do his prayers. <laughs> Get him on the bus now with his man. <laughs> I can't remember his name now, but I can't remember who was actually rooming with him. Can't recall at all. No? An all-inclusive club. No. <laughs> I, cannot remember. I can't remember that either. Well, if you go on that team sheet, well, I presume he's a player. <laughs> you know, so what? You're on a supporters. <laughs> John, no. You know, John. Is it John Porter? John, John don't even know why. I can't. I can't think of anyone who that could have been that season. I remember? No, I can't remember that. No. no. Well, I'm looking for that then. So that was that was that at Ashford, wasn't it? I'm sure it was. Yeah, the only person I think it could have been was Richard Dunwell because he came in on loan. He's the only lad you probably wouldn't have known, you know, as well as all the other lads. Um, would it have been impossibly a lad from Barnet on loan? Unless he's done prayers, I don't know. He was praying on his mat. <laughs> um, we'll try and solve that one. But yeah, Cheno, you, you, you scored um, the first goal under Steve Cottrell, um, but he didn't actually have a great start. He, he lost his first two games, sitting born away 1 0, and then Kings in at home 2 1. You scored. Yeah. Did you. Did. did Gresley started to pull away, didn't they? And did you, did you. Were you all conscious that second place was going to be good enough? Because um, it, you know, it looked like that point, Gresley were going to go on and win the league. Did you know that um, second place we would be enough? Yeah, I think I think we were because um, their place wasn't great at all up at Gresley, was it? Um, yeah. So I, I think it was a case that if the league allowed second place in, then second place would be enough. Mm. Um, so I think then it was a case of us, Gloucester, and was it Hells that win the third team, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, which were battling for that second place. So I think it was a case not giving up, like say Gresley's won it. 
um, until sort of later on when it was sort of out of the way and they had pulled away too far. Um, so it was a case of battling that out for that second spot because we're all thinking that could be enough. Because sometimes the, the, the league will let up second, sometimes they don't. It depends what happens in other, other leagues as well sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, so we had to aim for obviously finishing as high as possible when the first place is on, that runners-up spot, um, which we were luckily... Uh, we, we luckily did because we even messed up at the last game of the season at Burton, didn't we? We didn't even get a win there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was lucky that, uh, say, Gloucester got battered by Salisbury, I think. Was it about four? Something like that? They got 3-1, yeah. 3-1, yeah. Three three one, was it? Yeah. yeah. So, like I say, we even had a favour at the end of the season as well on the last game by Gloucester, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But let's let's have a chat about Burton. Do you remember that right, Bresley? Bresley, terrible. Gresley, terrible. Yeah. Off the pitch. Terrible. Mm. Terrible. Yeah. Was, it, was, was Gresley the one which went sort of down in a dip in the middle? It went up both ends? It's like, yeah. a, like in a ball? It was weird. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the surface, I don't think I would have played a grass on it, did it, the surface? And the changery as well. I've been in some changes in my career. That was like, whoa. Yeah. 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 Shocking. You see what they won? Yeah, they... They, they, they beat you 2 0 at their place, and there was a two all draw um, at Cheltenham against them. And they, they did have some good players, and they had some ex football league, you know, Forest players, I think, and Paul Futcher was there. And they had a, they, a lot of those lads went on to play for Southport under him, I think, when he went up to the mm. conference. But oh, okay. um, yeah. let's have a chat about the Burton game then, because Archie, I know you said you were just happy to be playing, enjoying it, but yeah. that was. Or, or, you know, you, you knew that if you went there and won, you were going up because you just had to equal or better Gloucester's result. Yeah. Was, was yeah. that a, was that as tense for you as players as it was for us behind the goal? Because we we were very nervous that day. Well, again, I think when you step back, you know, twenty five odd years later, you, you realise how big it was at the time. But I think at the time we were, you hear things from the stand that the Gloucester were winning, then you were losing, then we missed a penalty, and you have <laughs> Fine, but I think at the time I didn't realize like you, you, you're back in the conference for the first time in a few years and you go again. But I don't know, without, I mean, looking back now, we, we, we got what we wanted and we went from there. And it's always sad, really, because you, in any, in any walk of life with any, anything with football, especially, you lose some good friendships, some good players, people move on, and that's like the sad thing about it. Then all of a sudden, Chapman went, no disrespect to what was there before, Chapman went a little bit more, I wouldn't say big time or professional, because it went on again. Yeah. And we've got football league players coming in. Um, like I said before then, obviously, we always were lost three or four lads we got really close to. But that's the football, I suppose. Yeah. So, Look, Darren, looking back, I think I'd say that, 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 that performance that day as well, it might have been nerves, um, but it was an edgy performance. Yeah. Uh, we weren't really at our best, you know what I mean? Um, because, say, if we were flowing, we, we should have won that game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, I just felt it was a little bit of a, a edgy performance. And yeah. at the end of it, it was one of those of relief because, well, oh, thank God they haven't won. You know what, know what I mean? Um, and then the celebration sort of start. But you get that towards the, I, I think, I think we were okay towards the end of the game because we had the, the results coming through that. You know, they were getting convinced you need beat. So we were thinking, oh, thank God for this. You know what I mean? We're going to get away with this one kind of thing. But mm. I think it was an edgy sort of uh, tense start to the game, I think. Mm. Yeah. So if you, even if you don't remember a huge amount of the actual game itself, um, do you remember the, the celebrations there being up on the, the balcony with the, the trophy and <laughs> all the fans on the pitch? Yeah, uh, obviously because of the photos which you've sent as well through. Um, with, with, with a few of the lads sort of celebrating on the pitch and that. And it, it is, like I say, those are, are why uh, you put all the effort in throughout the season. It's for those moments, you know what I mean? Um, and like Arch says, whatever the, whatever the standard you play at, uh, those moments, um, they come for the hard work you put in throughout the season. You know what I mean? Um, and it, it is a real sort of relief. Oh, we've done it, you know what I mean? And then all your emotions kicks in and, and we had a good time. I think we had a good time. Yeah. yeah. Good way to get back to Bristol. right in time. <laughs> yeah, giving it giving it large probably in Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I just remember Samus Chen. I thought the game was poor, really. I don't think we got going, to be honest. No, and it could have been nerves, mate. Yeah, you're right. I think it could have been 
everybody was just feeling the, the tension of the, of the whole, you know, game. Um, but yeah, I don't think we we didn't really perform that well, not as well as we had been, you know. And um, it's just one of them, and we just scraped it. We just yeah. scraped the guy, yeah. You know, um, Archie, you were you were brought down, weren't you, for the penalty and um, you know obvious penalty? And I think Richard Dunwell stepped up. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy took a lot of the penalties then, didn't he? But I don't think he was fit at the time. Yeah. Um, and and it was saved, and that probably made it even more. Yeah. Nervy. I don't know how at that point how aware you were of the Gloucester City result, but were you getting updates from the sideline from Steve or anything? Well, he was on the pitch at the end, but did you did you know what was going on at Gloucester City no, or I not? Think, I think late on. I think late on, Swords were running obviously three one and yeah. Uh, and I think the penalty was quite late, wasn't it? If I can remember. Um, how did you not take the penalty then, Arch? Sorry? How did you not take the penalty? Oh, I'm useless at penalties. What? Useless. Useless. Oh, no, seriously. I've taken some penalties before. Useless. Mm. Honestly. I still miss now. And I've got me, <laughs> and I still miss now. I've got me, on. I've got me gold issues on. I still miss now. <laughs> never, been, never been a massive fan of taking penalties, I've got to say. Um, but listen, like I said before, I think, you know, it was all for a reason, I'd like to think. Like, you know, let me go back to Lindsay, to Chris, and to, uh, I always said before, Lindsay Parsons, God, God rest his soul, Chris Robinson does well for himself, fair play to the bloke. They've both done ever so well to get what we got to now. And Iggy. Yeah. Don't forget Iggy, mind. He done well, Pete Aiken. Listen, Pete Aiken, I do mm. pass touch quite a bit. Pete Aiken. And always laugh when the time we picked them up, his two kids were very young. We picked them up, me and Lindsay and, and the Buddha boys, and um, all the way to, I think, Greece. And um, he walked out, gave his two kids a bit of a kiss. He got around the corner in the car and he started cheering. You know, a week away with the honours of the lads. And I thought at the time, oh, that's really funny. Um, but I look back now thinking, fair play. And, um, but there were some good people there. Yeah. And just at the time, the right person came in to maybe move on a little bit more. Yeah. But like I said earlier, then you lose some good people at the football club, players-wise, obviously, and you, 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 you then lose some good friendships in football. And that, that's the sad thing about it, really. But that's football, Arch, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's yeah, football. Yeah. Things evolve, things generate, you know what I mean? And for yeah. the club, after that time, and what Steve went on to do, um, you can't fault it, can you? You know what I mean? You yeah, can't no, fault no, no. it. We're a very driven person. I still see him now at the shopping and tell you, probably get his haircut. Um, still very driven, still very, um, how can I say, um, just sad he hasn't, he hasn't, he isn't, um, a little bit more like we're doing now. That makes him, you know, just a little bit worried what people are saying about him or what he's saying about him. I can understand that the phone situation, people will say things and it gets, Chucked about, and all of a sudden that story's got a bit bigger again. So it must be quite difficult when you're managing a club like like he has. Um, but I just think he was so driven in his football, um, he could have been a little bit more, a bit more normal. Yeah. That's approachable. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's a good one. Very. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not approachable now. I see him in time before said hello, and he, he talks to me and my wife now like he's been interviewed. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. it's like he's always in front of the camera and got to say the right things. Yeah, rather than say, you know, like we are now talking a bit openly and you know, that's yeah. What, yeah, so that's that's something I suppose it's I don't know really, it's, it's a horrible, isn't it? Because you know, you will everything which look at now the politi politicians now at the moment, you know, it's, it's, it's all gone crazy, isn't it? And you can it go back to things what five years ago, that sort of thing. So it's quite, quite, quite difficult, I think. Um, and that's the sad thing about it. But no, um, hey, listen, it is what it is, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Martin, you mentioned um, Peter Aiken. He, he, I think he was in caretaker charge after Lindsay went to Gillingham, wasn't he? And I think he was very close to getting the job before Chris came in. And he knew a lot of you from earlier in your career. So did, you know, it'd be interesting to see what would happen if he'd, he'd taken over, wouldn't it? It probably would have been very different. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair well, to him, I. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. true, but but in all fairness, I think he took he, I think he took eleven, ten, eleven games in the, in that, and I don't think I started in any of them. To be fair, um, so I don't think I would have been part of the club either, Dad. But um, it 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 was it was one of those 
we were playing some really good football um, the season before under him, under pre-season, under Lindsay. Uh, and it, it, was, um, it was the foundation, really, for moving on. Um, and then, obviously, Chris came in. And, and, and like I just said before, he's brought in some good players. Um, like Daz, Daz went on and, and sort of basically his record, you know, speaks for, him, for himself, really. Um, yeah, it, it, it was one of those. I think anyone could have taken that forward um, at that point. But then to sustain it and move forward to the likes of where they are now, um, it did need to change. Um, it, we, we were a lot of mates who, who welcomed in um, good friends um, and, and, and we enjoy playing football. Um, and I don't think that's, that's what players do now. Um, I would say it's very much, it is a career. Um, and, and, they, and, and you've got to look at it completely differently. At the time, loved playing football at Cheltenham. Some great lads, very successful. Um, you know, always fond memories, really. And, and, and talking about the last game at Burton, I think I was sub and came on at roughly the same time as Steve, if I remember rightly. But uh, my, one of my favourite memories, I would say, is him missing an open goal mouth. <laughs> <Just think well. laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, to, to win promotion in that game was brilliant. But I do, I do recall it was an open goal mouth, but Steve did go through one-on-one. -on -one and and I, I just sort of thought, well, he would have been an un, well, at such a hero if he'd have scored it. Um, oh, it <laughs> yeah, but in reality, I'm glad he went on and done what he'd done and left the heroism to the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, um, it was quite weird because you played Gloucester on the last game, which would have been the last time you lot all played together in the County Cup final. You just pipped them to promotion. You went there and beat them in the Cup as well. I don't know, yeah. So that probably would have been your last game, three of you, would have been your last game for the club, I think. Although, Shanna, you came back for pre-season, didn't you, I think. Dean, did you come back or did you go at the end of the season? No, no, that was, that was, that was me done. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no, that, that was me, me done. I, I had the conversation with Steve. And unfortunately, he said I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be getting much game time. Unfortunately, next year, so that was just enough for me. And at the time, Colin Addison come in at Merthyr, so that was. I just wanted to play. I was young, maybe a bit naive. Maybe I, maybe I went too soon, really. But I just wanted to play, so that was enough, really, for me. Yeah, and Darren and Archie, you already sorted. But and came in. It really Sorry, Dean. Sorry, no, it, it was just, I was just going to say when Steve came in from my point of view. Taking the dog uh, for a walk, Arch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm outside, but I ain't got any sun cream on. I'm going to have to go back in, mate. You be careful, mate. <laughs> so, Martin, did you, did you know when that, that, that Gloucester game ended at the County Cup? You won the Cup. Did, they, did you know that was going to be your last game for the club? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, it was. It was. Um, yeah, it was. It was already signed and sealed probably a, a week or two before that. So um, yeah, no, it, it was uh, just not going to be not be able to sustain the level of training and commitment to that level of football. So uh, while, whilst I was trying to concentrate on my career, yeah, J Jason, so, yeah. Jason, and Jimmy both went on to get over a hundred goals for Cheltenham but you were only there for three years but your ratio was was up there with those you know even though you were only there for three seasons you always scored pretty consistently didn't you yeah no I enjoy scoring goals um I, I think where, if you look at wherever I've gone I've scored goals um I'm not the type of player people think I should be but uh you know when it, like I say if, you, if you've got the lads around you like we had at Cheltenham like the lads I've had at Mangotsfield and Bath in the past you'll always get given a chance and uh, thankfully um, you know I can put, put them away or at least the majority of them away so but yeah. Jason, Jason and Jason and Jimmy went on um, and their record speaks for itself so uh, you know I can't knock the pair of them yeah and the other lads you joined with from Bath I think Cheltenham played 16,000 for you and another lad who, who went on to do very well for the club didn't he and probably has been described as one of the club's best ever signings, Chris Banks. Yeah. Who? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it was funny, actually. 
I, I remember when I joined Cheltenham, it was one of those, um, we went to uh, a tribunal and um, uh, I, I sort of turned up and uh, Chris was there as well. And funny enough, we didn't really get on at Bath. So, um, <laughs> so when I signed for Cheltenham, I was actually sort of one of those, ah, great, I'm going to meet some new players, see what it's like. <laughs> and then he turned up. So it was a uh, funny old story. But, uh, I don't, I don't know how the split went either on it. I think it was sixteen thousand. I'll always say it was ten for me and six for him. But um, <laughs> that sounds good. So what was that? Sorry, that sounds very fair. Yeah. <laughs> one, thing, right. <laughs> uh, one thing you saw a boy out. If you could chuck a ball up to you, you get it back. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. That's because my touch was born. I will play. <laughs> Many forwards after that, even with the likes of Neil Grayson, you chuck a ball up to Neil Grayson, you didn't know when it was going to come back or ever come back. <laughs> uh, but like we said earlier, it, different people, yeah, you know, players, different things. So it was interesting, you know, um, play with Jason a lot, Jimmy Smith, um, different again. But sometimes, like I said, you know, for yourself personally, as a midfield player, you chuck the ball up to you and you will run past you, you know you're going to get it back. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said, that's what I said earlier. Yeah. But, because yeah. uh, and like I say, it's not just your touches, you, the, the brain as well. You just know what, yeah, what, 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 what where your runners are. You know what I mean? You know what we're going to do, where we're going to position ourselves, and whether you're going to bounce it back off to us or flick it on round the corner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gosh, you know, you, you know, you're going to get it. If Martin Boyle was any quicker than Sarah, no, <laughs> he wouldn't have made it Chatham Town too long, would he? There you go. Uh, That's yeah, a few league games under his belt, mate. Yeah. So you, listen, we played at a level which we could all try to say, well, I could have been better at that or I could have done that. You are what you are sometimes. Mm. You know, you can't make it what you want. You are what you are. You can get better, quicker, faster, but some people have got pure speed. Mm. Like, yeah. that, that else. Yeah. So when you look at other players, yeah. they've, got, they've got the ability, they've got all that. That's why they play at the top level, you know. So, listen, maybe we go. This is what it is, you know. And, yeah. yeah. As long as you enjoy it on the way, Archie. There you go. <laughs> Very kind, lads. Cheers. No I must admit, because you... you were doing my running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chenna, you, you were... So Darren and Archie stayed. Martin yeah. and Dean knew they were moving to pastures new, but you were one of the ones that was probably undecided for a while. What In the end, oh, why did oh, you decide to... I was, I was undecided because uh, I could, you, could, you could tend to see what things are going to happen... Um, how things are going to pro progress as the season's coming to an end when you're in, you're out of the team, where you're playing. Um, he sort of tinkered a little bit with the formation a bit and I was being forced a little bit wider out to the left, which I didn't want to do or be in the centre with the, where we were, you know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, you get that inkling. Um, my contract was up at the end of the season, so it was a case of what do I do here? You have a chat and you see where he's coming from. Um, Invited me back, wanted me to come back pre-season. There was no solid concrete offer on the table, though. That uh, here's a contract I want you to sign, kind of thing. So um, the summer happens, and you know what happens in the summer. <laughs> All the clubs come phoning you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? Come and sign for me. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Um, and my decision over the summer was: I had a few, I had a cut offers on the back burner, but I said, look, I'm going to go into pre-season. I'm going to see how it goes. And I will make my decision fairly early on in pre-season because you get an idea of how things are going to, how the ground lies. You know what I mean? Um, so I went in, had a few sessions, had a few chats, quickly worked out this ain't going to be for me this year here. Um, and went back to Bath because the offer was out on the table with Bath. You know what I mean, I know where uh, that I was wanted. You know what I mean? And what, what I was getting and uh, who was there. Um, and I just thought it was going to be personally a better decision to move on rather than to stay um, where I was. Yeah. So you three, Martin, Dean and, and, and Paul, you, you all definitely went out on a high after that promotion and the, the cup win. And then Darren, you had one more year at the club and you went out on a high as well because you, you sort of signed off with the Wembley celebrations, open top bus tour. That was your goodbye before you went, I think, to Stafford, didn't you, after that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, you know, I mean... I'd sort of, just like Chenna, you know, I'd had the kind of, I'd been sort of on the bench quite a bit that season, of not and come in, played, and then was back out again. So you kind of, and I was about 30, 30, 31 then. So at that age, you know, you want to, you want to play every week, don't you? It's just natural, because you know that around the corner's retirement, after, especially, you know, 
um, with rehabilitation the way it was and injuries and things. You kind of get to 30 in non-league football back then and you know it's only sort of, you've, had your, you've done your peak and you're on the way down. You know, so yeah. I personally for me, I kind of just knew then that, I, you know, the season was going to get harder after that. So I just felt that it was time to move on, you know. Yeah. Um, again, just like Jenna, you know, I could have come back for pre-season training, but I didn't. And I'd had sort of a few um, meaningful <laughs> conversations, if you like, with Steve Koch on the phone. <laughs> he was kind of questioning why I hadn't turned up for pre-season training. And I just said, well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I'm going to be in your plans. So that's why. Oh, no, no. You know, and it, obviously he was trying to get me to come back to pre-season training, but uh, it was just done for me in the end. Um, yeah, that's why I went to. I think Stafford. I think Stafford paid a fee for me because I was still. <laughs> I think I, I was still on contract, so I think that yeah. Stafford actually paid a fee for me. But um, you were worth it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you went to the goal bonus again, didn't you? Not when I went, not when I went to Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst decision I ever made. To be fair, boys. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, yeah, you know that, that's football in it, as as Paul just said. You know it's. It's the way it is. You get a feeling for it. And, um, you know, fair play to um, March and Bob. You know, they just went on in midfield and were just brilliant. You can't, you can't take that away from them. Um, and, yeah. um, you know, they, Arch and, and Bob were really good at what Steve Cotter wanted them to do. So that was it, you know. Yeah. And Archie, you've been at the club for probably six years by then. And you were only halfway through, really, weren't you? You went on to yeah. stay for, you know, kicked on again and again. And, and everyone says that you were playing some of your best football in what is now League Two uh, when you broke your leg, and then you would have been well into your thirties, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I was 30, 34, 35 when I broke the leg. Um, wow. Yeah, listen, it, 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 like I said, the other day we have, we have a chat about you know different things. Um, again, maybe for a reason. Maybe uh, the break of my leg was for a reason to go back into barbering and. Um, uh, maybe if I'd had a two or three, four years playing football, not, I've got maybe a different direction. But um, yeah. no, listen, things happen. Um, not a big deal. Um, luckily for me, I signed a two-year contract a week before I broke it. Uh, I had a nice summer watching the cricket, from and uh, it was yeah, it was fine. No, no, listen, then things changed completely for me. So we've all been on the road where Steve uh, spoke. Um, new man to come in, and um, before that, I think we had, I think Graham Order, I think, to give a good mic. Mm. If I can remember then, uh, another different few of my managers, and before I know it, um, I was on the other side of the coin where I felt left out massively. Um, then um, got told basically you're, you're, you're no longer wanted, which is fair enough, it's hard to take at the time. And, and before I know it, I find um, back into non-league football, got back into barbering, which I wanted to do, and went to a fan, fantastic football club, um, Merthyr Titville. Best days of my life. <laughs> Thanks for that, Arch. <laughs> you are? <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. Yeah. Yeah, that now, takes him to Dean. Again, so I've gone then from non-league to full-time, back to non-league, and it was very difficult to get back into that. You know, that non league again. Uh, like I said, I had a year and a half there with John Relish and Andy BTL. It was good fun out there. Okay. It was just different, you know. But at the time, football wasn't, football then for me wasn't that important. It was about me maybe playing. No disrespect, but it was the first time I think I've ever played football for a bit of money. Nice. And it, that sounds a little bit not nice for them, but the money was there. It was good money, non league football. And, um, that was one of the reasons why I went. I'm not ashamed to say that, but it's one of the reasons why I went because I needed then to go and study to go and borrow it again. And um, so that was okay with the reason. And um, then before you know it, um, I got back into being a barber again, which was good for me. And um, yeah, then bit by bit, football then me fell apart quite quickly playing as a, as a footballer. I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't want to re break another leg because that, was, that was, wasn't very nice. And I just lost the level of playing football. Yeah. yeah, Dean, you're involved at Merthyr now, aren't you, as you said earlier, and you're only at Cheltenham for a year, but, you know, 23 
or 24 years on from when he signed. How do you reflect on that, that one year you had at the club? With enjoyment, I suppose, and a bit of frustration. Um, like I said, um, I think I was a regular when Chris was involved to start with. And um, when Steve came in, it was not, not so great for me, to be honest. Um, like I said, everything changed a little bit. And obviously, a certain Michael Duff didn't help with the breakthrough <laughs> of him. So, um, yeah, so I found myself really the second half of the season, definitely not playing as much as I'd like, if I can remember rightly. But I, I can't recall how many appearances I did make. But um, but yeah, it was you, made, you made a few. Yeah, you played a few under Steve, um, including mm. one at Merthyr actually. And you did. You sort of played six or seven in a row. But then by the end, it looks like you were you coming off the bench by the end yeah. of the season. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it was all to do with obviously Duffy breaking through really, and um, well, it's not bad, is it? The way what, the career he's gone on to have really. So <laughs> yeah. so yeah. But um, yeah, no enjoyment and. And obviously, you don't you don't realise until, like Art said, like twenty five years later, or whatever it is, what achievement we we made. Really, um, you don't realise how big that the game was, the promotion, a bit naive. So, um, yeah, we, obviously, having this chat brings back a lot of memories, but they are good memories. Yeah, I just like I said when I left. Um, perhaps I look back. Did I leave too early? But being naive and young, you just just want to play just wanted to play every week and when you're not playing and you see people enjoying their football it just uh, it hurts a bit so yeah I just needed to go out and play really and then I was yeah. in the same position again the next year we finished runners up then to Forest Green but obviously because they were, they could go up we didn't go up that year so yeah so um, no good times good times yeah Martin could you just give us a little summary of what you did after leaving Cheltenham football wise because I know you you played on to a good age for eight Yates Town, didn't you? I think, and even Yates Reserves uh, later on in your career. Did you? What what year did you call it a day in the end? Or what age, sorry, did you call it a day? Well, playing eleven aside was um, forty two, so um, that was Yates Reserves. Um, warmed up for about twenty minutes. Well, nineteen forty two. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it's it's a strange one. Played um, it was I, I warmed up for about twenty five minutes, and uh, went on. And literally, we we just uh, conceded a goal, and I took the kick off and pulled my hamstring. <laughs> so uh, I played the last quarter of an hour with a, a pulled hamstring and a decision to uh, call it a day. <laughs> so um, yeah, now it's at forty two, but I, I still play five aside now regularly with. Um, uh, Gary Hewlett's so probably I think he's an old Cheltenham player um, I, and uh, yeah no, I, I still enjoy playing football I didn't have all the managerial um, input that Archie and, and, and Daz have had um, and I'm glad I didn't I enjoyed the playing um, I was never very good at sort of coaching or um, I, I would sort of say uh, encouraging people uh, I was more of a just play, do what you can, and, and, and it's just natural. Enjoy it. But, um, no, finished playing 11 side at 42. Uh, don't regret any of it other than um, probably going to Forest Green. That was a bad move for me. But um, they were successful, uh, and I can't knock them. Some good lads there. But uh, it, was, it was time to sort of drop down the league, to be honest. Yeah, 42, brilliant um, innings. And, uh, and how do you reflect, Martin, now? I know you, it's a long time ago, and and unlike some of the other guys, you haven't been back. Um, hopefully, we'll get you back for a game at some point. But how do you reflect on your time at Cheltenham? Three, three good years, always up there, challenging for promotion. I absolutely loved it. Um, great bunch of lads. Uh, a, a bad injury, not sort of my middle season. But, um, but to be fair, I loved every minute of it. It, it wasn't about the f um, money or anything like that. It was great football, great support. I mean, Cheltenham... As a club, we we're, were probably the best supporting club um, around at that that time, um, and it was lovely playing in front of that crowd, really, and 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 scoring goals and and, and stuff is always always enjoyable. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, and Cheno, you've been back for a game and you know had a little chat with the crowd at half time, which I know you enjoyed. Um, did that bring did that bring back a few memories coming back to the ground? And I know it's changed a bit, but. 
Yeah, a few, a few things changed at the ground, like I say, with the uh, stadium um, and the stands. Um, the, the bit of corporate bit, which you got upstairs, which, which was very nice, um, uh, where we had a little bit of a meal and a, a, a chat with the sponsors, first of all. Um, but no, it did bring back through a few memories. Um, I had a little chat before the game, where in and seen uh, Bucky um, and Duffy uh, in the changing room, and then, like I say, afterwards. Um, but yeah, like I say, a, a good good reception. Like I say, a few fans obviously still there from all that time away, which recognise you and, uh, and I see you, want to chat to you um, and remember what you did. But um, that was a very enjoyable day, to be fair. Like I say, I appreciate you being invited back up. It was, it was, it was nice. Um, and any lads who haven't done it, like I say, I, I'd suggest it is a, is, a good, uh, is a good day out, to be fair. You get a guest, you take a guest with you as well. It's uh, it's only sun, had a good day. Yeah, it was good. Was yeah, Jimmy Smith phone numbers now? Was Jimmy you. Smith still behind the bar? <laughs> Jimmy Smith? No, 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 he, he wasn't there, mate, unfortunately. I went in to get a point, mate. He wasn't there. Um, I tell, that's another thing that's changed as well, though. He was in the bar afterwards, um, and Duffy come in. I had a chat with Duffy, and his old man and everything was there. And I ain't joking. I think about two players came in, got a Lucas aid, and then shot off home. They, they, they don't have a drink no more, Arch, do they? Yes, What's it all about? No. I should have loved, loved training on Tuesday and Thursday, like I think I said to John before, we used to leave training, we'd go in the bar, right? Yeah. we got the corner, get our burger and chips and grow. And it was, that sort of makes it. Yeah. yeah. Seven thousand. I, sp- I suppose they, I suppose it is professional now, it's not non-league, you know what I mean? Um, so they've got to be seen to be doing the right things or eat and drink the right things. So it, it is totally different to our days, I know that. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Thing with it is the little things you miss. Mm. You know, that makes it the little things you miss. And sometimes it isn't about the football. We get no, the football, it's, it's a little thing. And it's, yeah, it's and the bonding, isn't it? I'd rather done what I've done than rather than go and play for five different football clubs, a lot more money, and not enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Darren, um, you, you, you played, you were at Wolves, weren't you? You played a bit in the league for Wrexham. And... Um, but you, I've got to mention it because you got Player of the Year that year. That year, Cheltenham went up okay. um, as runners what? up. So well done for that. And uh, how do you, how do you reflect on that that period? You know, pre- pretty much three years at the club, like Martin, but one one year on that you joined. Um, how do you reflect on your time at Cheltenham overall? Yeah, just like all the lads have said, absolutely loved it there. Uh, loved the lads, loved the uh, club, loved the supporters. It was just a good time to be there, um, and I think we were lucky because. And I think I've said this before, you know, everybody who were at the club, when you trained, you've got to be on it. You know what I mean? And, you know, when you when you come to the match day, you've got to be on it. And um, all the lads there were like that. I think we I think we were there, we were all roughly the same age. And we were kind of all coming into our sort of peak, if you like, you know, at the same time. And I think that's what helped sort of like the uh, the kind of progression that the club was doing, you know. Everything was progressing, like you say, and um, I think the lads were doing that as well. You know, they were getting better and obviously coming into their peak periods of, as players. Um, and I think I think that helped. But um, but yeah, you know, I, I absolutely loved it at Cheltenham. It was a it was a great club to play for. Um, and you know, like like all things, when you hang your boots up, you kind of you miss it. You know, so I have tried sort of staying a little bit, doing a bit of coaching. I worked at Wolves in the academy and. Um, did a bit there and I've done some coaching outside non-league and things like that um, but yeah it's been you know I'm still involved a little bit now with Kern OFA down here they're kind of trying to get into Kanifa um, yeah. and funny enough this time last year um, there was like a, a like a mini World Cup in London and two Cheltenham Town supporters turned up with a club that I was coaching at the time and <laughs> um, just come to the game at Slough uh, Slough Town's ground um, just turned up called me over Said, oh, we're from Cheltenham, we've come to support you. And I just thought, how oh, brilliant, you know. <laughs> years and years later, you still kind of thought of them. Like, for me, that was just amazing, you know, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Great times, brilliant memories, and a great set of lads. Absolutely brilliant set yeah. of lads. It's great, great to see a lad doing so well at Hales Owen because you, you went there, didn't you? And I think you were, were you there with Neil Smith as well at Hales Owen, yeah. who was obviously Cheltenham captain a few yeah. years earlier. Yeah, you know, went to Hales Owen after Stafford. Again, you know, knew that I was coming to the end of my career. I'd signed for one year. Um, did I, enjoy, I didn't, re- you know, it was one of them clubs where, because it was on my doorstep, it was one that you always wanted to play for. 
And I always thought, oh, I would, I'd love to fly for our zone 10 because it's just up the road. Um, and went there and absolutely hated it. <laughs> Honestly, it was, the worst. it was worse than Stafford. But I think that was partly because I was at the age where my body was telling me to retire. Pre-season was very hard, very difficult. Got injured in pre-season. And it's just an uphill battle from there, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a, as a club, um, it was run pretty well. But um, football-wise, didn't enjoy it at all. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully your son has a better experience. Yeah, my, my, my lad's doing all right there. Yeah, he's doing really well. They got to the FA Trophy semi-final. Um, um, but um, obviously, because of COVID-19, you know, it's all been... It's all been cancelled now, so I don't know what's happening about that. But um, and their season's finished, and they were going to get they were going to get promoted, I think, as well. So, but I don't know what's going to happen there regarding regarding that. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that was the first of three promotions for Cheltenham in five and a half years. And thanks for uh, you know the, everyone will be fondly rem- anyone of a certain age will fondly remember that season for the sort of start of the journey, really. Um, trying to get there, got over the line, and then. Obviously, the club kicked on, but thanks very much for taking the time to have a reminisce about it because uh, it was it was a great season for the club. No worries, John. Pleasure. 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 You all boys, by the way. It's lovely. And you, Dad. Yeah, nice to see you all. Yeah. yeah.